On this episode, we talk about the cycle of unfulfillment, whether or not fiction writers should start a website, and one author who made his way to the top using social media. Hello, world. Hey everybody and welcome to Finish Friday, the show that helps more creative people change more lives. I'm your host Todd B from Tennessee and I created this show because on a scale of one to folding a fitted sheet by yourself. Okay, first you. Then you tuck the ends and I saw Martha Stewart do this once. Creating things is hard and getting done with those things is even harder. So this is a little bit, I gotta tell you, this is a little bit of a departure for me because like I'm normally doing like two to three minute videos and I'm way high energy and that kind of pace uh, for like 10, 12 minutes is exhausting for, for you and for me. Um, so this is going to be a, an experiment. It's gonna be a good show. Um, and to give you guys some background, I started on Snapchat. I did like two years of Monday motivation on Snapchat. Every week showed up, new Monday, new motivation. And over those years, like as I've grown my writing career, right, I've gone from zero to 24,000 on Medium, been featured on CNBC, Inc. Magazine, Apple News, and, and stuff like that. I realized like my true focus and my true passion is activating artists and getting creative people to do what they do best and I think that I have a way to, to help with that because I'm a motivator by nature. I encourage people by nature. And so that is kind of the heart and soul behind this show. I'm super excited to get started and share it with you. And so without further ado, let's move into today's topic. Today's topic comes from an idea that I've talked about before. If you've been really following me for the last couple of years, you've seen this thing kind of emerge over the last six months or so. And this is an idea that I started with um, kind of as a really rough cycle, right? I talked about cycle of unfulfillment in the show intro. And, and what that is, is something that all creatives go through, right? Like we all struggle with this and we all get stuck in the cycle of unfulfillment from time to time. And when I first released this idea in, in its rough form, it, it didn't have that name. It was just kind of kind of the idea, like what is the cycle of unfulfillment? And it kind of got some good traction, right? People tend to latch on to this idea, especially creative people, because we're so attached to what it is, right? The cycle of fulfillment happens in three phases. Did I say the cycle of fulfillment? The cycle of unfulfillment happens in three phases. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna edit this show much. I wanna be a human being, and so you get the full Todd Bryson, for better or for worse. Phase one of the cycle of unfulfillment is the idea phase. You know this phase, you love this phase, right? It's when you're sitting at home alone doing nothing, or when you're taking a walk, or like having coffee with your friends, and you come up with this new idea and it's the best idea you've ever had. And you like, you can't listen to anyone around you and you can't hear anything around you because this idea, oh my gosh, this idea is the one that's going to change the world. It's the one that's gonna transform your career. It's the one that's going to move you in a whole new direction as an artist or as a creative person, or even as an employee who does creative work. This idea is going to change your life, right? That's phase one of the cycle of unfulfillment. And then you move into phase two, which is, obsession. This is the phase where you are completely devoted to this idea, right? Like you had the idea. It's the only idea that you're ever going to have now. You love this idea with all of your heart and soul and your gut. You execute on this idea, right? This is the kind of thing that, that creatives live for, right? Where we stay up from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. just trying to put this idea into reality, just trying to make something happen with that spark that we found, right? Because there's nothing better than right after you find an idea and you are obsessively working on that. Maybe it's a novel for you, right? Like maybe it's that blog you started last week because we're just starting January, right? Maybe it's the gym still and you're, you know, in the middle of January, the beginning of January, still obsessed with this idea that's gonna change your life and you are all in. 
until you reach phase three, boredom. The problem with the boredom phase is that you realize what your idea has is a lot more work than you initially expected, right? Like you have the idea, the spark, you love that part, that's the best part. And then you have the obsession where you're going all in on this idea, you want nothing else. And then in phase three, boredom is what crushes a lot of creative people because we realize that there's so much more work that goes into what we're trying to do. Everybody else makes it so easy, right? Like the mu musicians we see on screen or the YouTube stars or the novelists or whatever, they make it seem so easy. But in this phase three, it's not a lot of fun. Like you, you did all this work, you put so much effort into your idea. Like I get it, I've been there, I've been there so much. And then you get bored, you get tired because you realize like you get to the middle and this thing is not at all fun. The idea has lost all of the sexiness, all of the shine, all of the glory that it had at the beginning and now you're in the middle of the work. And what always happens in the middle of the work, every single time, is you get an idea and all of a sudden you're back in phase one and you're going to chase that idea with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind until you get bored with it until you come back with a new idea and guys ideas are not the problem ideas are the solution right for creative people we can't help but be driven by ideas we can't help but find those ideas in every place we go in life but I gotta tell you Whenever you get stuck in this cycle of unfulfillment, what happens is you never finish any of these ideas. You never get anything done and you always reach that boredom phase and you're always looking for that new spark, right? It's like the guy in the relationship who can never stay long term. It's like, it, it, it's like the, the new millennial, right? Who's bouncing from job to job and just saying, oh, nothing, nothing fits me. Nothing works for me right like that's what this cycle is but what i've learned over the years of right right eight plus years of writing now formally is that bad work will not kill you unfinished work will kill you whenever you don't whenever you get stuck in this cycle of unfulfillment right you're not finishing any creative projects and so you just create this emotional baggage and it grows and it grows and it grows every time you take a lap around this cycle and guys i gotta tell you it's time right now to break that cycle some of you are going to be watching this the day it's released some of you are going to be watching this in the second third and fourth week of january where all of those resolutions that you had and all of those great ideas are starting to die off and you're starting to come up with new ideas please do me a favor and break the cycle of unfulfillment i need you to finish and with that let's get into today's question of the week This week's question of the week comes to me from Twitter, and I try as I might, I got this back in November. Some of you remember I was like Nanorino, or NaNoWriMo head cheerleader, right? Like I was freaking out and talking with so many people, like thousands of people at a time. And so I couldn't find where this question came from, but I think it's important to address anyways because so many of you are going to struggle with it, right? So, here we go. If I'm a fiction author who has not been published yet, should I build a website? And if so, what kinds of things should I put on that website? Okay, this is a, yeah, this is a killer question. And I think so many, like a lot of you are fiction writers or novelists or whatever, or you want to be, and, and you're trying to decide like the balance of the social media website thing versus actually writing the novel, which is what you like to do in the first place. I, guys, I mean, to me, it, it's a no brainer. If you're a fiction writer, you need to have a website and you need to have, in my opinion, one that's your name or, or something like it and get rid of, take $12 and get rid of that wordpress.com baggage, wordpress.org, .blogger, whatever it is, get rid of the tag, get your own domain name and start to set up that fiction writer's website. Um, but I think, okay, so this is where my advice is going to be a little different than most people would probably expect. The temptation for fiction writers is to like create the website, right? And then just start publishing fiction work. Like you think 
that the only thing you could do is publish fiction work on your blog or YouTube or Medium or wherever. Like that's that's your promotion, right? But I think instead you should set up the website as as basically your resume, right? You have a resume that says who you are, what you write about, what you like to do. On that website, I would create an email sign up list that offers three chapters of, of your new manuscript for free or something like that. Like that's that's your magnet to get people into your email list, which I, I think, well, I, I don't think, I know the email list is the biggest thing that publishers look at. Like when, when they're looking at social media presence and they're evaluating that, they want to know if you have direct contact to the people who want to read your book. So you want to start that email list on your website. And then I wouldn't publish any more fiction than that. I would instead turn all of my efforts into writing about the process of writing or writing about life lessons that you've learned while you're writing. Okay, and, and I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't even do it on your website. I would, I would go all in medium.com, open blogging, no startup time, and just, it, it, the best editor, ugh, guys, okay, so to give you context, like I've been writing for, for two years uh, consistently online every week, and almost all of that has been done in medium. I wrote, I wrote for nine months on Medium before I even had a website and was able to build like a five or 6,000 person following so that I could then move the, you know, take them over to the website when I did build them. Actually, you know what, if you're a fiction writer right now and writing this, you may as well start building a platform on Medium as a writer or, or Instagram or wherever else. You don't have to have a website set up first thing, but you do have to have some when you start to catch those people and you want to get them into your email list and stuff like that. So personal website, medium.com, blogging about the process because that's the stuff that's going to be applicable to everyone. The thing is like fiction, fiction is such a crowded market and you're trying to break out of all these voices, right? And, and the problem is you have to overcome the obscurity first. And it's my belief that the best chance you have at that is to write some nonfiction, get people to relate to you on a human level, and then move ahead with the fiction stuff. Okay, thanks for that question on Twitter. Uh, that question is sponsored by the audiobook of The Creative's Curse. I'll put the link down below. Uh, that's my book. It just released the audio version. Um, it's like $6. It's good. You should definitely pick it up. Listen to the retail sample. Or actually, oh, okay. Um, let's so let's let's edit in some some footage of the free excerpt I release of the audiobook. I wanted to ignore tweets from a stranger sharing my work because I wanted to seem too busy. Think about how ludicrous this line of thought is. I spent all this time and energy and work to get a post that went mildly viral, and whenever it did, my ego got enormous. Look at us, it said. We're famous. Yeah, so pick that up. I'll put the link down below. Thank you for your support in advance. And with that, let's move into today's Artist Spotlight. Today's Artist Spotlight is going to focus on someone you guys probably already know very well. It's a fiction writer. It's a guy that's huge online. It's someone who I believe is really representative of, of what can happen if you're a fiction author and you go all in on the online stuff as well. It's John Green. John, like, okay, so my favorite book from John Green is Looking for Alaska. I think it's one of the most raw, honest, powerful pieces of fiction that I've, that I've ever read. Um, and, and the thing is, I don't think that that book would have even gotten in front of us were it not for his social media presence and his online efforts. Because that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about relating people human to human. That's what John Green does better than so many. I mean, name name a modern fiction author other than John Green, who who has done a medium amount of sales or, or something like that. You know, you got Rowling, you got Terry Pratchett, you've got John Green, you've got a few other people in that space. Matthew Quick, uh, the author of Silver Linings Playbook, it is has done really well. But I think John Green stands out not because he's a good writer, which he is, but because from the beginning he was on Tumblr. He was on YouTube. He, you know, he had the Vlogbrothers thing with his brother kind of doing all of that stuff. And I think it's because he was able to build such a big audience on his own that he was then able to 
publish book after book after book, four now, and three of them. I think Looking for Alaska is getting into uh, getting made to a movie now, and the other two, Paper Towns and Fault in Our Stars, already have. So for me, that's that's not a coincidence. I think John Green, his efforts online, Twitter, um, YouTube, Tumblr have created his career and it's my belief that if you are willing and able to like set down the I, I think okay so this is good I'm gonna go to the side a little bit here because authors and artists we have we have this idea like we wanted to be shrouded in mystery like we we have this weird obsession with okay that's my art but you can't touch me like and, and we create separation there but I think the more accessible you are and the more human you are to anyone who wants to read your work, the more likely it is that you are then able to sell the book, which I think is the goal in the first place. That's today's Artist Spotlight. Um, good show. Yeah. So if you guys leave a comment below, I would love that. I appreciate you watching already. Finish Friday episode one. It's only going to get better from here. Again, this is Todd B. from Tennessee, and I will talk to you soon.